Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. Limpopo MEC for Health, Dr. Bobi Ramatuba, continues to receive backlash for the comments she made to a Zimbabwean patient at a hospital in Bela Bela. We get some reaction now from Deputy Editor of the Sunday Times, Mike Saloma, who says the MEC, who is also a medical doctor, was out of line for ridiculing and humiliating the patient. Saloma joins me now to discuss this further. Very good afternoon to you. Thank you so much for your time. A lot of backlash following the MEC's remarks. Of course, uh, raising a lot of questions about uh, how this conversation could have been conducted, uh, one that is uh, really serious and uh, is one that is difficult to confront. What's your take uh, on this reaction? Uh, thanks for having me, Mpo. I think that uh, we need to start by looking at uh, our society, that our society in South Africa is divided. Uh, and it's divided between people that you may call the elite or the middle class or the rich uh, on the one hand. And on the other hand, you've got the majority of South Africans who live in the townships, in the villages, in the inner cities, etc. Uh, and, and, and how each of the, of, the, of, the, of the sides look at the world, uh, at our country, often their views often diverge. Uh, sometimes they even contradict as in this case, you know, that the, 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 the majority of people who have been condemnatory of the, of the MEC are people who tend to not be using the public hospitals, who will not be impacted by the, you know, by, by the problems in the public, uh, public, public health care system. Uh, and the majority of the people who have supported her are people who have a lived experience of the problems that are caused by uncontrolled immigration into their communities. So this discussion then broadens even wider where we are confronted with the, um, you know, the challenge of uh, managing migrants in South Africa and now looking to the, the discussion around classism. Is it a matter of classism? Yes, it, it is. It is a, a class issue um, because the reality is that South Africa is a a country that is divided, you know, into two. You know, we've got the haves and we've got the... They have not, and their views uh, tend to be to be different. It, they, they, what 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 I find striking about this conversation uh, is that uh, the, 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 the the it seems to me that the people who are the elite in our society uh, tend to uh, find it very easy uh, to sympathize and to stand up for the rights of uh, people who are immigrants but they are silent and totally unfeeling about the suffering of fellow South Africans. You know, you know I, I, I talk about, the, 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 you know, in, in my article about that, you know, to this day and age, you've got people who live in mud and stick houses in South Africa, one of the most advanced economies on the continent. Uh, there are kids who still have to use uh, uh, pit toilets. Uh, you, 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 you have got long queues in the hospital system. Uh, which, 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 which are directly affecting uh, South Africans. And it seems to me that it is easier for the elite in South Africa, which is black and white, uh, to, to have empathy and sympathy and stand up for the rights of, uh, of migrants, but they, they, they are completely unfeeling you know, about the plight uh, and, and the violation of the rights of fellow South Africans you know, in, in the areas that I've spoken about, whether it's looking at housing, joblessness, uh, poverty, hunger, all of those, you know, the, the elite and the middle class in South Africa is completely silent. Yeah, and I suppose th this outburst now has uh, again brought the uncomfortable and divisive issue uh, and questions on how as a country should we be dealing with migrants in search of political shelter or perhaps even greener pastures when looking at the sort of policies that we have and how they should be implemented. Yes, I think there's a lot of naivety in South Africa uh, in, on the question of, of, of immigration. Uh, and and the, there is a lot of, uh, even the people who, who profess themselves to be Democrats and champions of human rights, the tendency is that when we disagree, particularly when there's a disagreement between the classes, the elite you know, are very quick to label and to try to shut down the expression of the views of the people who are complaining. You know, and I find that they, they just don't have time for, for, for them, you know, and they, they try to demonize them, you know, and, and to, to, you know, to basically to caricature them as people who are backward or barbarians who don't understand, 
the benefits or, or the glories of globalization. And I think that, we, you know, the government has only now, you know, uh, seemed to, to grasp, the, the, you know, the, the, the extent of the crisis. And they are looking at the, the issue of, uh, of, of, the, of the critical skills you know, to look at the critical series to see what the country needs and what the country doesn't need. And all of those activities, you know, tighter immigration laws are not, you know, are, are, are not uh, xenophobic by themselves. All countries in the world have got immigration regulations which are applied uh, without exception. Mm. Uh, so I, I think it is wrong for us in South Africa to say anybody who dares to raise the issue of immigration is, is a xenophobe. Yeah, and the MEC has flatly rejected calls for her to apologize or even resign following that video. Surely, on some level, there needs to be some form of accountability, whether, I mean, addressing the, the manner in which her approach was or, or looking at it in a, in a broader way, in, in some form or fashion, some, some accountability is needed. Of course, uh, um, I, I think that the way she raised it and... and the person with whom she she raised the issue is is, is you know it's, it's not going to solve the problem you know because it's really like barking up the wrong tree but i don't think we should be uh, diverted you know by the issue around how she spoke i think the more fundamental issue for our country is that the violation of human rights of uh, in particular the majority of south africans and we need to begin to talk about that even as we're looking at and, uh, and and we care about looking for people who are in our midst either who are here as political refugees or economic migrants i think we should look after those people out of our own ubuntu out of our own human rights culture out of our own international obligations and in how we deal with migrants but i think the critical issue is that we we need to have this long overdue conversation in south africa about the violation of the human rights of the majority of south africans in terms of housing education etc we need to have that conversation very well thank you so much uh, for your time perhaps let's leave it there for now mike suluma deputy editor of the sunday times weighing in of course uh, to the reaction that has uh, come about following the mbopo mec for health dr bobirama tuba's remarks